tectonic forces push up the surface and lift it to higher and higher elevations. Earth's surface represents a delicate balance between tectonic and climatic forces, which through erosion removes material and lowers the surface. These models are based on what we think are the best mathematical relationships to explain how different processes work on this landscape. For example, hill slope processes convert bedrock into soil, which then moves downslope to rivers. Rivers take this sediment from the hill slopes and flush them downstream if there is enough water. One of the biggest questions facing geoscientists today is how different would this landscape look if vegetation were on it? In this computer model, we can see how the addition of dense vegetation to the Earth's surface would influence the landscape development. To grow dense vegetation, we need large amounts of rainfall. Plants influence how the rivers erode into the landscape and how sediment makes it to the rivers. They intercept rainfall, which limits the water's ability to erode Earth's surface. And because of their protective effect on the mountain slopes, the plants concentrate water runoff and erosion into large, deep valleys. However, as uplift continues, the mountains between the valleys rise higher and higher. If we zoom into one catchment, we see that vegetation obstructs the flow of water and focuses it in channels. We can also see the deep weathering of rock by water and plant roots. This landscape is very similar to what we see in Parque Nacional Nahuel Buta in South Central Chile. This next computer model shows how different the land surface looks with very little precipitation and thus little vegetation on top of it. The sparse vegetation is unable to protect the surface from erosion, so even though there is less rainfall, it is easier for it to erode the hill slopes. Because of the low water flow, only small river valleys form. The eroded sediment is transported into a dense drainage network of many small rivers. Due to a lack of water, a lot of sediment remains in the valleys. Drought and reduced plant cover also lead to less weathering and thinner soils. This example of an arid landscape with very little vegetation is similar to what we see in northern Chile, in the Parque Nacional Pandazucar. Finally, we compare the two model landscapes, the wet landscape with a lot of vegetation on the left and the dry one with only few plants on the right. The models suggest that how much vegetation is on the Earth's surface makes a major difference in the topography. Using such models, we can begin to explore the importance of the many controlling factors we find in field studies and how these processes interact with each other.